This is banned from ringside. All right, so Jason and I just got done. It's March 17th, 2022. We recorded the podcast with Two Beer Zach. We talked about everything except for NXT. I went and took my child to bed. Hopefully she's sleeping. <laughs> she might be screaming. Right. But we we heard her screaming before, though. She's not screaming anymore. So Sounds like you say for the moment. And then uh, Jason and I started talking about NXT, and we thought, you know, we it, might it as well record to, this. No, because, it got to an interesting discussion. And well, the discussion started because I said, I think it's cool that Dolph Ziggler has the NXT heavyweight belt. And Jason, your rebuttal. For me, and I'll just say it like this. You're the, wrong. The, no, the, the NXT title has not been highlighted enough on the main roster to make me feel like I should watch Dolph Ziggler in any Who kind of Who gives a ma- fuck about the main roster, no, though? I'm talking about NXT. Like, doesn't the NXT this, championship count for anything? It does. In does the, the NXT wor- championship count for more than the WWE tag team championships? The way that they present them, no. Which one seems like a bigger deal? The tag team titles. That is, they at least I, acknowledge I, it on on WWE what? on WWE proper on Raw or on SmackDown. Oh, on, you're caught up on the WWE proper stuff. We is never Finn talk Ballard, about. Is Finn Balor not? About, is Finn Balor not a former NXT champion? Yeah, two but time. what what do we, the nerds of the nerds, the nerds that talk about G one and the New Japan Cup? What do we talk about? Do we talk about the main roster ever, or do we talk about NXT, or do we used to talk about NXT? We used to talk about NXT. And I watch it every week, you do. and I'm ready to talk about it with you guys. And, Jason, you have abandoned me. You used to watch <laughs> everything. <laughs> no, I was about to say, NXT is the only thing I really stopped watching on a regular basis. Everything else I still watch. So you can watch anything from this week. I didn't watch NXT from this week. I watched uh, Raw and SmackDown. <laughs> okay, so then, what, so, nothing, then, so how is this? How is this now my fault does, that does, I watched two of the three does shows? Does Imperium versus the Creeds versus MSK? Does that interest you? A little. I would be lying if I said it didn't. Uh, I always, I always say I like Imperium. I mean, MSK, MSK feels like they're the the odd team out, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. I think they're they're the established team. The Creed brothers are the established team. And this goes back to my initial argument about NXT. If you're going to go and brand this as an NXT 2.0, then you should stick with the developmental talent. Bringing in Dolph Ziggler, bringing in The Miz, Bobby Roode doesn't do anything for me because these are guys that, are, that yeah, we what, don't need what do on the main though? roster. Like, what do you care like, I don't understand why you care who they bring in. Is I don't. It, that's why you, I don't watch. Does it make you want to watch it? No. Okay, then that's all that that's all that counts. Don't say because they brought in The Miz or they brought in Dolph Ziggler. Don't say that that's not the reason you're watching. You're watching because you wouldn't be watching anyway. It's more. It's a reason that the reason that WWE is doing it is they're trying to get eyes on the product. For whatever reason, some people, like myself, are just not that interested in that developmental product. I don't watch AEW's developmental shows, so it's not like I'm shitting on eight or just WWE. I don't watch AEW developmental shows. I have no idea how you had any time to watch any of that shit <laughs> anyway. It's an hour, man. You can't put an hour down? I mean, Jesus no, Christ. fucking New Japan Cup, if they have four second-round matches, that's an hour and a half of your time. Done. Easy. Easy. Yeah, but before that, they have two hours of three-on-three and tag team matches. It's not two hours. It's like an hour and a half, though. The whole show. No joke. The whole shows usually go about two and a half, maybe three hours tops. When's the last time you watched a TV show? Uh, I watched, uh, I'm going to count Power as a TV show. It's a a series. I don't know what that is. So, for those who know, Power is on Stars. It's basically about uh, a drug dealer in New York. Wait a minute. Is that a black show? Yes, it is a black show. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a black show. So, it's not like I, d- I do watch other stuff. I just, it's filtered in. You do you watch any white shows? 
I mean, it's like you guys have had so good for so long, you black guys. <laughs> it's like, do you ever watch any white shows? Because we have shows too. Bar Rescue. I watch Bar Rescue. I watch, uh, I, what is that, what, Summer House? Bar Rescue would be funny if that motherfucker started going in the black neighborhood. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this shit's no, up. there's a couple times where he's gone into the hood, and I'm just like, he saved, supposedly saved Marshawn Lynch, uh, Lynch's restaurant, and it's nothing but black people left and right. He came in showing his ass. I thought he was getting ready to get his ass handed to him in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Run through a motherfucker's face. <laughs> um, L.A. Knight. Uh, th- okay. Case in point, I would love to see L.A. Knight on the main roster and do some damage. The fact that he's even on NXT boggles my imagination. So you didn't watch the main event where it was L.A. Knight versus Dolph Ziggler? No, I wanted to, it sounds like an amazing match. It was good. Okay, there you go. They gave it 13 minutes, <laughs> clean finish. Really? Yeah, Ziggler super kicked him. It okay. was done. I want to ask you about L.A. Knight. Does it bother you that L.A. Knight is so clearly ripping off The Rock? A lot of people say that, and I don't necessarily think he's ripping off The Rock. I think it's more of how he speaks. It's his cadence. It, oh, he's it, so articulate. He speaks so well. <laughs> and he's white, too. It's the, I think they, they do sound similar. I would I would be lying if I said otherwise. I don't think he's ripping off the rock by any stretch of the imagination. Eli, even before there was L.A. Night, there was Eli Drake, and Eli Drake had his own little thing going on th- yeah. with the dummy, the yeah, the whole shit say, like that. I'm gonna say it 100, percent 100. percent There's no room for error here. He is ripping off the rock. No, he he thinks not. he's the rock. No, uh, he he just talks like the rock. No, That's doesn't. all he does. No, he does. <laughs> I like it. It's long enough away. It's far enough away to where it's almost a sign of flattery. I don't. There, th- there are more years in between the rock doing the rock thing and LA Knight doing his thing than there are between Scarface and Razor Ramon. Ooh, okay. No, that's true. No, you're right. You're, that's, that's, fair. It, that's fair. Ten that's fair. more years. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. But that's it's okay. I like it. Okay, then here's my question then. Do you think L.A. Knight is a main roster talent? Yes. Why is he on NXT then? Don't know. That's that's kind of where I'm going with this. If I want to do – if you're going to do developmental, just do it. Okay, there's, there's plenty of talent that needs to be on the developmental. I love Malcolm Bivens. That's the one reason I would watch weekly. Yeah, but there are still like gatekeepers. You know, there's you got There's still people that gotta get gone. Gotta through. Ha- yeah, you gotta you have know. the gatekeepers. Cassius Ono a- was it for a long, long time. time. Yeah, when we really started to watch NXT back in the heyday, who the, in the black and gold era, I will give you that. I guess, my, like I said, to me, the disconnect, and this is my whole problem with it. It doesn't even have to do with the developmental brand. I mean, there's there are some good characters there. Grayson Waller is a walking heat magnet. You know what I'm saying? He's uh, good. No, he's good. He's actually good in the ring, and he's like I said, he gets all kind of heat. Uh, Sika Sokoa, I think he's, he he will be good somewhere Solo down. Sokoa. Solo Sokoa, he'll be good down the line. The disconnect between how they operate on the main roster and how they connect that with NXT has always been my biggest problem. If you're going to have Karrion Cross, okay, the only reason I think they even said he was NXT champion is just to make the connection. After that, they didn't even treat him like an NXT champion. I he think- was the... Now, we went through all the old stuff, even into stuff that we were watching while it was happening. Right. We start re-watching stuff. Now, we didn't watch it all the way up to what I think was the pinnacle, no. so to speak. No, we were getting there. Of Which was Cole versus Gargano in that best out of three match. Yeah. Which was, to me, the best match that NXT ever had. Maybe Oof. the best match I've ever seen. <laughs> That's a tall, tall statement. Hot oh. takes all the way around. I mean, I watched it twice. My wife watched it. She was marking out the next day when I decided to, that me and Vice were going to watch it again. 
like she was marking out, like it was, it was the real deal. Great crowd, everything. Where was I going with this? No clue. No fucking clue. Oh, I was, LA, I was, LA, ta- LA I was it, talking about Carrying Cross. Okay. It it almost seems like Carrying Cross had to happen. There had to be one guy at the end to where they just tried one time a little bit too far. You know? Like you, every- you don't think it's Keith Lee? Well, he never won the title, did he? Yeah. He won both titles. He, he won it off of uh, Adam Cole, baby. No, I don't think Keith Lee. I think Keith Lee is a next level type of talent that is probably sitting shiva too often in some fast food drive through. <laughs> <Great shit. laughs> so, I mean, Damn. that's that's, that's what I, I mean. He's just getting super fat, and he is like 39, 40 years old. He is not a young man. No, I'm not saying he is. And he's getting too big to start doing the things that he did that made him Keith so Lee. desirable in the first place to a to a company like WWE. Okay. Here's why I think part of the reason that Keith Lee was like the, I guess, jumping the shark. That's what I'm looking for. I said it then, and I'm, I'm going to still say it now. Drown the shark. No, you jump the shark. No, he drowned the shark because he <laughs> fell on top of it and neither one of them get up for air. I told you guys that marrying those titles, making it a title for title match was a mistake. Okay. You didn't have to do it. They they wanted to do it to pop the rating. What are you talking about? When Keith Lee and Adam Cole had the title for title match on NXT. Sure. Okay. I said it then. Shouldn't do it. It's a mistake. No need to make, you know have one title. There's plenty of talent. Blah 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 blah. That was on a takeover. No, it was actually on uh, regular television. Okay. Okay. So obviously they went on ahead with it. Went and it did it. Adam Cole disappears for a little bit, and then they break it up mysteriously afterwards for no because Keith Lee wants to give other guys chances. Okay. There's no reason in the world to do that. So now you take Keith Lee, you put him against Karrion Cross. Cross is beating the hell out of him both the times, wins the second time around. It's not even like Keith Lee had a run like other NXT champs had a run in some form or fashion. His claim to fame was winning the double championship, and after that, nose dive down, Karrion Cross was the same way. You don't, you didn't even like his run at all. Who? Cross's run. Well, I was I was kind of a defender of it, like way more than Zach was. You might be mixing me up with Zach because Zach Zach did not like it. I was okay with Karrion Cross's run just because he won that five way, okay, which made him look pretty strong because he put everybody down in the five way. Uh, but no, I mean I'm. I'm not going to sit here and shit on Karrion Cross. Everybody wants to shit on Karrion Cross all the time. There was nothing wrong with Karrion Cross. He's a great worker, a good character, and knows how to play a pro wrestler. He doesn't know. look like a fake-ass pro wrestler. I don't know. We might have to look in the archives for this one. I think he was... Uh... You think Isis? I think you you and Zach were down on the title reign of Karrion Cross. As opposed to you and Zach? No, as opposed to just me on the island by myself as alone as usual. No, no. Yeah, we should look into the archives for this. <laughs> I'm telling you, we right. This is banned from ringside. All right, so Charmel is now in the WWE Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Miss Elizabeth is it's not. Still not. What do you think about that, Jason? It's got to be something that is holding it, this back. I mean, Miss Elizabeth should already been in at this point. I mean, well, she was Charmel before Charmel. She's she was a lot of valets before a lot of valets. I guess yes, the she's, only she's the she's the best valet. The only thing that I could possibly think of is 
the Lex Luger involvement where she, apparently she took one, one too many drugs and she passed. So you're taking shoot style? I'm taking it shoot style. There is no legitimate reason that you can think of. Let me ask you this. and I, I just want to be so <laughs> sensitive about this. Does Charmel belong no. in any Hall of Fame? Like, Look, the I'm, argument I'm King for Bo- her is that she, she made King Booker's act was good with Queen Charmel. But it's not like some all time act. No. <laughs> and it now should, she, now should she be runs in this before Miss Elizabeth. She, but now she runs this promotion with Booker T. I forget the name of it. Uh, forgive me. It's something. It's down in down Houston. Houston. Yeah. Down in Houston. Roxy came from it. Um, but they're, they're like, oh, well, she runs this promotion with Booker T. It's like, okay, that's cool. Sh- I mean, all Hall of Fames are bullshit, I guess. Who am I getting mad at? Why am I getting mad at this? No, I can't I get to- mad at Butch, and now I'm getting mad at this. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? No, I'm not- I think legitimately I'm mad about it just for the simple fact that, to me, Macho Man is one of my favorite wrestlers in any promotion at any given point, anywhere, anytime, Same birthday anyplace. as me, too. Motherfuckers, man. Me, what the fuck? Me, Shima, and Macho Man Rain Savage Dude, all the, have the same birthday. What the fuck is this? That's the, pretty strong. Good job, Mom and Dad. Um, it just if I find it really hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that you had a whole, like, the WrestleMania angle that a, a lot of people forget is uh, Ultimate Warrior versus Savage. If Savage, whoever loses, had to retire. Okay, so obviously Ultimate Warrior wins. Uh, Sensational Sherry goes ape shit, starts beating uh, Randy Savage. Miss Elizabeth hops the rail, throws Sherry down. They ride off into the sunset together. The wedding that went left where Jake the Snake's uh, – Damien came out, bit, you know, uh, came out. I don't think it bit, I think it bit Randy or whatever the case may be. A part of that, the the makeup powers exploding. I mean, who is that all about? It was about Miss Elizabeth. Now, if Charmel can come up with anything along these lines, then by all means, you can come up to the head of the class and be in the Hall of Fame. If not, you need to take a seat. This is banned from ringside. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for checking out our bonus episode. This has just been me and Jason stoned and a little buzz. And <laughs> just kind of yelling at each other. So, so, talking about some shit that we probably need to talk about, but Bill had a good idea to record it. So we're going to put this into posterity. Bonus episode numero uno. This is banned from ringside.